This is Morning at NTV, and many thanks for making us the number one breakfast show in the country. Our next conversation, we're going to be talking about fisheries, aquaculture, and all that. I have someone from the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry, and Fisheries right there. So, with the support of GIZ, Responsible Fisheries Business Chain Project, the second edition of the Ginger Fish Festival was... Uh, the first one happened in Ginger, that it was on the 1st of December at Forever Resort under the theme celebrating sus uh, sustainable fisheries. Now, the second, the second edition right there will be held in Entebbe Zoo. Yes, Entebbe Zoo, that will be the second edition. And uh, what do we get to learn? The festival is a chance not only to try some delicious fish, but also to learn more about the resource. The public will have an opportunity to explore which fish comes from Lake Victoria, including the popular Nile patch, which currently is the fish fetching the highest foreign exchange towards the Uganda economy. So right now I have Edward Rukunya, the director of uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. He joins me right now in studio. A very good morning and thank okay. you for joining us. Good morning. Us. So we've had so far two festivals for fish. Yes, two yes. fish festivals. One was held in Ginger, 1st December. Oh, December. Then the second one will be held in Entebbe on the 15th of December. Yes. So tell us, what should the people expect come 15th December? Okay, fish festivals uh, have become important uh, mm -hmm. on, in terms of impacting on fisheries and uh, we expect that when stakeholders come there first of all they expect to eat a variety of fish species in the uganda is very blessed with quite a number of species that are delicious that are nutritious and it offers an opportunity for the youth for the elderly to enjoy the fish species uh, basically you know fish has lots of nutrients that are essential for the growth of the body uh, another issue to see in the festival is the sharing of uh, investment opportunities. Uh, we have uh, uh, many youth and many women and uh, men who have invested in the fishery sector uh, along the value chain. So you expect to see what the public out is doing there in terms of uh, investments in the sector. And you never know, you can end up being uh, a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. uh, again, in the fish festival, uh, we have youth participating in uh, art, music, uh, where they are demonstrating sustainable fisheries, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Nile patch that is contributing greatly to this sector, bringing in uh, over 153 million US dollars annually. And uh, in terms of nutrition also being very important to uh, supplement to animal protein or protein source for uh, adult Ugandans, the children, uh, and those who are sick, it is able to help them recover quite mm -hmm. uh, easily. Also in the festival, you meet uh, uh, stakeholders from government, that's uh, the Directorate of Fisheries Resources, the National Fisheries Resources Research Institute. Uh, we have civil society organizations like uh, uh, Uganda Fisheries Conser Fish Conservation Association. We have the Association of Fishers and Lake Users of Uganda. We have Uganda Fish Processors and Exporters Association. All those have key things they offer. Mm -hmm. uh, government institutions offer policy, uh, policy documents that can guide you in your businesses. Uh, the research wing shows the technologies you can use to benefit from the sector. The civil society also demonstrate responsible fisheries and we all need to be responsible Ugandans mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, fish is there today and tomorrow. Indeed. So Edward, is it true that uh, we can use aquaculture to empower women economically and hence propelling the economic growth? Yeah, it's true. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, aquaculture has uh, taken root. It's now growing at uh, 6% per annum, uh, which it never used to be. And uh, you know women are key in uh, agriculture. They can be able to have uh, fish ponds in, on their la land or the land of the husbands. And they have that time to feed the fish and take care of it, uh, which would uh, definitely translate into uh, higher production and uh, productivity for the benefit of their families. And aquaculture... Uh, 
you, once you've grown the fish, you can also take it to another level uh, of value addition to increase the the price and the benefit. Mm -hmm. So how can we enhance on the number of fish in our water bodies? Uh, in order to enhance on uh, the fish in our water bodies, uh, first of all, we need the soft approach and the hard approach. Mm -hmm. The hard approach, which is UPDF, the which hard has approach. given us a little bit of fruit, but then when on the not of human rights violations, no, 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 no. So what could be that softer alternative we could, uh, we could use? Uh, the soft approach is uh, working with the resource users, the fishing communities, mm -hmm. to have a co-management arrangement where government has a role to play and the communities also have the role to play. Uh, but in some instances, of course, world over, you find uh, the hard component also has to come in to ensure increased compliance. And uh, the current enforcement arrangements have led to increased stocks and the communities are benefiting. Mm -hmm. yeah, they may suffer uh, in terms of losing livelihood, but uh, at the end of it, the benefit is there. Mm -hmm. okay. So what challenges have you been experiencing in this regard? Okay, the challenges we've been experiencing, first of all, we have uh, quite a number of water bodies. So we need capacity in terms of human beings to be there to take charge. And uh, of course, you don't just uh, deploy people, you have to train them to ensure that they are, that they are equipped in terms of uh, uh, knowledge and skills in uh, handling uh, uh, fisheries protection. Uh, okay, the other challenge also uh, relates to low levels of compliance. Uh, you find uh, fishers have already been used to uh, bad practices. So changing them and changing the mind is also uh, not easy. Uh, and of course, you know, working on the water is also not simple. Mm -hmm. The conditions. Uh, so you need capacity in terms of uh, uh, effective boats with the high power engines to be able to reach the various bays and be able to uh, contain the mm -hmm. situation. So how can we get rid or reduce the impact of invasive fish like the Nile patch? Okay, fish, okay, Nile patch is uh, from Lake Albert. Mm -hmm. It was introduced in Lake Victoria. So sometimes it's called invasive. But we also realize that it has transformed the economy and the social well-being of the people. Mm -hmm. So definitely invasive species have advantages and disadvantages. But on the bigger side, uh, Nile Patch has been critical in transforming the nation mm. and the people. Mm. We are about to wind up, but let's talk about the effect of climate change that it has had mm. on the number of fish in our water bodies. Uh, climate change, uh, of course, is an external factor that comes in in, in the management and uh, as government we have to be prepared. Mm. Uh, of course, Climate change leads to reduction of the water surface and uh, that of course affects the fish breeding areas and uh, more impact has actually been on uh, Lake Wamara and uh, in the end it also comes to affect the fish because once the fish breeding areas are interfered with the condition that stimulates healthy growth of the fish is tampered with. And of course, you expect those changes. Uh, we also say climate change could be the one leading to having invasive weed species on mm -hmm. our water bodies, like uh, water hyacinth, Salvinia molesta. And uh, as the water levels reduce and increase, they propagate mm -hmm. the seeds, and uh, you find the proliferation of the weed higher on uh, most of our water bodies. Of course, climate change also affects aquaculture. Mm. Uh, fish needs water. So once you have your ponds and uh, you don't have enough water that's permanent, you will find that you are not having higher yields. So what is the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries doing to arrest this situation? 
Uh, the ministry has a, uh, an action plan uh, that is being implemented. Uh, we are teaching our communities to adapt. Mm? We introduce mitigation measures uh, for them to be resilient and not have uh, quite big number of losses. Mm -hmm. It may be a disadvantage, but you can also exploit it. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if uh, pond fisheries is getting affected, we are also empowering our fishers mm -hmm. to go into cage fish farming. Uh, of course, we also look at alternative livelihoods mm -hmm. uh, other than uh, fish. We also promote such alternative livelihoods in fishing communities. As we wrap up, Mr. Edward, I'm very sure there's a viewer who's watching right there at home who might be interested in aquaculture. Just look into that camera 20 seconds and let them know what they should have mm -hmm. in mind before starting in venturing into aquaculture. Yeah. Okay, before you venture into aquaculture, you need, first of all, to ensure that you have the right documentation. You are working within the policy environment that uh, is there by government. Uh, secondly, you need to have uh, a permanent source of water uh, if you are doing a pond or land-based aquaculture. And uh, then you must use the right seed and you must use the right feed to ensure that uh, production and productivity is enhanced. And in case you are using a, a cage farming, uh, of course, you also have to go through the government processes. Uh, to ensure that you are guided where to place your cages because uh, site suitability studies must uh, be done and with the environment is tested. You must also not interfere with other lake users like putting cages uh, where a ferry passes and uh, or putting cages in the fish breeding area. So basically that is it and the technical guidance is there. The director of fisheries resources is available to give the technical guidance how to better manage aquaculture. And thank you very much. Edward Rukunya, he's the acting director, Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. We've been talking about the Fish Festival. The second edition, the first one was held in Jinja. That was on 1st December. It was a Sunday. And the second one will be held on the 15th of December this very year. So look out for that in Entebbe, Entebbe Zoo. Am I right? Yeah. Well, but let's take a very short breather. We'll be right back with a lot more.